wanted to explain when we introduced our morning sessions. Uh, it was an idea that Anne and I and a couple of others came up with because I did the MBA last year and Anne and Fergus did the MPhil program. And we had a chance to get together with a couple of our fellow students because our supervisor organized it and we thought to ourselves, this is a really, really interesting space because there were MPhils, there were MBAs, there were development finance, there were RAA students, and all of us got to talk from our different perspectives and challenge each other on some of the assumptions and some of the questions that we had about the research that we were doing. And so we thought that we'd actually like to try and make it more official and make it more open so that it isn't a supervisor that's organizing it, but rather the students driving it and driving the types of research that gets discussed um, and the openness that there is to it. So, yeah, cool. I mean, I also spent a lot of time during my info year working in the GSP space and sort of just getting to know people quite randomly. Um, and I just thought it would be so great to be able to sort of cocoon that in a more productive way. Otherwise, we just run into each other in the bazaar and that's kind of as far as it goes. We bounce some ideas off each other just because we're sitting on the same table. And I was kind of like, oh, that would be so great if we could just kind of lengthen the experience. So we're hoping that this is going to be a space of cross-pollination and knowledge sharing and support and strengthening our own individual research questions and ideas. Um, and our first amazing presenter is Fergus, who as you know has been doing a lot of research on the festival, his community festival development research. Um, sorry, I wrote a question. And he's looking at how community festivals can build local economies and democratic participation. So, all of you who saw the invite, you already know that. I'm very really excited to share some of our ideas with you and for you to share yours with us. And also, just when we discuss things later, I want to be very clear that this isn't about Fergus defending his research. It's not a, a thesis defense. So if we can just sort of frame our questions and comments in a supportive um, way and just sort of maintaining that it isn't about kind of like fighting ideas, it's more about building. tapping into a gap that we recognized last year where there weren't enough of these kind of spaces where we could get together, uh, share what we've been working on and um, feel like there's a constructive sort of community of inquiry practice, etc. Especially with our diverse programs. Um, so I, I, I was reading I was reading the other day what, what sound what it means and sort of came across a good good picture of a violin. It's got something to do with a piece in, in that you could find in a violin or, or a guitar, which helps to um, amplify the, and, and sort of resonate the sympathetic tones in an instrument. So if that's anything to go by, then I'm really looking forward to this afternoon. <laughs> and also, just after these, after these introductions, I, I just feel so, wow. The, the depth of, of exploration and experience in this room alone is quite incredible. So, uh, festivals. I, uh, I'm going to share with you my research journey, um, where I've been, what I've been doing, what I've been reading, uh, what I've been up to, and where I am at the moment. And um, we're going to go through the slides quite quickly. I mean, the slides are just a summary of various things that, that have been going on. So I've been involved in festivals, uh, participating in experimenting with, assisting uh, in the coordination of festivals for a few years now. And I've always been interested in the act of organizing, of, of, of facilitating the space, hosting the space, um, from, from the micro to the macro, from, from global, uh, global economies of scale to small grassroots community initiatives. And festivals are interesting because the experiential level of participants is, is, is quite fascinating. I mean, we've all been to festivals and, 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 and we know what that means. That, that sense of, of exploration, of experimentation, of being open to new people, new experiences. And so, yeah, festivals are exciting in general. But in 2013, I was invited to a gathering in the place that I live, uh, Musenberg. And I was invited under the capacity 
at that stage I was working uh, with a uh, grassroots youth development nonprofit, um, sort of working youth development through arts and culture. And I arrived and was very surprised and refreshed by the energy in the room because the visionaries, the activists of the space uh, were, were deciding to gather everybody around this question of if there was a festival in Music World, what would it look like? And then, of course, there's, there's, a, there's a whole bunch of questions that follow, like, what are we proud of? Who are we? Who's here? Oh, I, I don't, you know, we, we don't even know each other. Musenberg's an interesting space. We go back a, back a month. I mean, that's a view from where I live. And you can, you can sense the way it segues various spaces in and around Cape Town, the geography, human geography. Um, the activators, the visionaries of that 2013 process that began were sort of running off this experience of these, of these small scale street festivals that happened in the, in the center of the Musenberg village. And they were very well attended, they brought a really good energy to the village at a time when Musenberg was sort of kind of uplifting itself from, from a period of decline. And really in a nutshell, the festivals about people, places and passions uh, working or playing together towards a more inclusive, sustainable and colorful community. Um, that's some of the some of the gets. And back in 2014, this was the kind of process that we were looking at trying to enroll people in. Where what do we share? We share a, a common space, a common experience of a space, which is fantastically diverse in culture, um, economies, and, and of course the the ecology. <coughs> and then there's you and you bring your specific interests, your value, your added value to your space. And uh, at these meetings, we would facilitate um, open spaces for workshopping on how can we collaborate with, a, with common interests and values and visions that have come up. And then, if we use for a better word, in order to operationalize the, the venture, each venture, each, each added value, we'd ask groups of participants to design a project which would sort of be showcased at the annual festival. But really, the festival is a process. The event, the best way to describe the event is it's the birthday of the process. So it, it's not about pro seven days in October. So just a couple other slides. So we, various ways that we tried to experiment with the design was understanding like beeswax, um, different ways of making making things that can sometimes seem complex and abstract, very simple, easy to engage with. So these are just different slots on our website. And then here's a nice little sort of diagram on how how we saw it happening, how how we would make it happen. And so the idea was that you had your eight task crews that organized around specific needs that we identified after these passions and dreams and visions for our common space had emerged. So we followed the passion, we followed the purpose, and we, we designed the structure around those passions. Um, it's just another sort of, we tried to ask people to experiment with thinking about their project in terms of celebrating Musenberg, making Musenberg, sort of referring to a sort of broad scale branding of designers and young and all entrepreneurs in the village, and then creating music. What do we want to see more of? Um, and so, eventually, it led to the sort of one line in 2014 where we realized, well, it's about showcasing and celebrating community led development in the sense that we understood development, which was the fulfillment of who and what we are, what we're proud of. And that's as simple as it gets. And the target market was always music. And if, 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 if we could be, if, if we could enjoy this process and be inspired by it, then whoever wanted to come and join in on that would, would come. And it was really about um, us being proud of where we were, placemaking. So this is, a, this is actually sort of a fast forward to the 2015 program. Um, I, I, I unfortunately don't have any copies here, but you can find this online and you can get a and I give the range of the kind of projects that end up emerging for the actual program, uh, which, which, which is, is um, the second weekend, the second week of October. And then, right from the start, it was always in our minds that 
that if we could document and hold this process and this design, that perhaps we might cause ripple where um, others might share, not, not uh, replicating what we've done, but perhaps asking the same questions and um, raising the same passions and thoughts about yeah, what do we want to celebrate? What do we want to make publicly known as this is who we are, this is what we stand for. Um, so when I found out about the M4 program, for me it was like, well this is a great space to experiment further with festivals and the capacity for festivals to be vehicles, if you will, for transformative community-led development. And so my research question along the way, I mean I was just as confused throughout the first few months and <laughs> this took a surprisingly long time to get down in one <laughs> sentence, I'm sure we all know how that feels. But basically how do festival organizations do institutional work uh, that builds social community in the local economy? And I want to stress that when I say festival organizations, I don't mean uh, management companies. I don't mean uh, groups of people that are uh, professionals that manage other people. Uh, I, I mean any organization that might um, concern itself with festive values or creating festive spaces. So I include, for example, Open Streets, which is which don't, they don't even call themselves a festival. They don't want to. They actually want to move away from that definition. Um, but they, they create that kind of space, that celebratory space. And so the, the associated objectives were, um, how can I also see this, this process as a way of engaging with best practices? How can I explore other festivals? I mean, I'm, I was an absolute novice at the idea of what it meant to organize or facilitate a festival when I first got involved. And then also the organizational structures. What kind of logics and, and organizational structures could be played with to make these things happen? without tainting the water, if you will. Um, and then the business models, of course, and the revenue streams. How, how do we move away from um, sort of donor-funded or sponsor-dependent um, um, spaces and move towards community ownership? Mm -hmm. Because, of course, a lot of the literature um, sort of further spotlighted on this problem of festivals becoming commoditized. <coughs> um, so the literature that kind of backed this up sort of institutions was, 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 was the big thing for me in collectives in institutions because institutions refers to the underlying routines, rituals, beliefs, not just sort of resilient um, structures over time. Um, and then sort of, I mean, organization studies and institutional theory were my, was my, my lens, my first lens. And I honed down institutional work, of course, because that was a turn in IT that stressed the role of the actor, the role of agency in uh, maintaining, creating, or disrupting institutions. And then of course festivals, um, there's a huge array of literature on festivals coming from very different disciplines, which, which makes it quite fascinating because you see how different disciplines, different mindsets see the space that you fall in love with in completely different ways. Mm -hmm. And so the, the key things that I started to hone down on was these concepts of liminality, and communitas. If, Sorry, I'll just go back one. Um, those were the, the key things I was looking for. I mean, if you want to, I was doing an action research methodology, so coding wasn't stressed all the time. But when I code my interviews, those are some of the key things I look for, references to that. And then, of course, social capital and social cohesion as theories for understanding uh, the, the outcomes. Although one doesn't want to, but for the sake of research, you've got to talk about that. Um, and local economic development was there was an area that I sort of I was quite at home with from earlier studies. So I looked at that for the economy side of things. Um, and this is this is a neat little diagram that really kind of speaks to the core of why festival. So communitas is this sort of Latin word that refers to this coming together of people but outside of the formal rigid sort of social uh, structures that usually regulate our relationships. And liminality refers to ambiguity, a space in between um, where for a moment we suspend belief, we suspend our set ways and our identities. Festivals are liminal spaces, they're petri dishes for communities. And this is really interesting because um, if they're a petri dish, what we put in um, 
doubles and grows and you don't know what's going to come up. And so, yeah, this is another really nice figure, um, but this idea of how can, we, how can we transform or sort of get to these desired states where our passions can be realized in our day-to-day -day lives in structures that often are the root cause for these constrict uh, spaces. And so seeing festival as a way of ritually um, bringing, bringing sort of entire participant bodies into the space of communitas, of real boundary breakdown, where we can experiment with new ways of being, new ways of seeing one another. And then that informing structure, so that purpose informs structure rather than, rather than structure reigning in purpose and reigning in passion. And this is all abstract, but it's not, because you, you, you experience it when you, when you sort of interact in, in the, the daily go-go of operations and putting these things together. Um, and there's a whole bunch of arguments and, and crazy things that happen in the organizational structure that I, I won't touch in these slides, but we can go into during the soundboarding session. Um, so my methodology was action research, of course, because it was insider-based, and I was trying to also explore these, these possible models, these, these, these possible organizational um, options for the Museum of Festival to become. Um, and then in two parts, recognizing that I was going to be doing action research inside the organization, but also I realized, hey, hold on, I don't know much about how people do this in any case. So I, I went to a whole bunch of other festivals to, to, to inquire and to learn. Um, and so, in a way, you can divide my research journey into four kind of segments. So after the 2014 experience, which was, which was quite a journey, um, we had a bit of a disruption in the team. There was a lot of questions about how to move forward. So between April and September, go back on. Thanks, okay. So between April and September, we were sort of honing down on all of the meetings and minutes that had come up and the central things that we wanted to uh, relate to in the, in, in the next process, the next 10 month uh, early process for the 2015 festival was relationship, stressing relationship in meetings, stressing agency, how can we improve the capacity of the projects to manage themselves and recognizing what kind of partnerships we want to not push because it's too premature and we don't know what we're doing. Um, and then the key, the key things that came through here, uh, just to quickly touch on this, is in 2014 we were an ad hoc committee, sort of brought in by all the projects who said, yes, okay, fantastic, can you, we'd like to mandate you to deliver the festival process. And um, we were faced with this thing after 2014 where we were like, okay, well now structure now um, organization, now who are we, what are we? And we resisted this, we resisted this. And so anti-structure speaks to project zero, which was like, hold on, what, what's our passion? Um, as the organizing committee, our passion is facilitating space, hosting, serving that purpose, um, helping to coordinate all the various projects. And so we decided, no, hold on, we, we must be a project. Um, so we must log a project in. And that the Museum of Festival Although we can copyright the name, it shouldn't be a, an organization in and of itself. It shouldn't be a set space that, um, that it's actually an idea that's owned by all. Um, and then the breaking practice was the fact that in, 2000, in last year, the amount of times we had to discipline ourselves and not go with the comfortable option. And the amount of times people walked out on us and said, no, no, hold on, this is, no. Just, just tell us what to do. Just, just give us a come, uh, you know. So you've got to, you've, you've got to go slowly, and you've got to, when it comes to event permits, even not go with the easy way of going. Well, let's just get this out of the way. No, the knowledge of how to deal with public admin with the city needs to be embedded in all. If, 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 if you, if there's an element of your project that needs permission from the city, you sit in that events meet. Um, you come to the party and that obviously makes everything take longer and everything take a lot more stress and time. Um, cool, we're going to rush through the sort of uh, data, but I'm happy we got through the, the bulk of meat. So um, this is just a whole bunch of themes that came up through interviews with 
other um, festival participants, organizers, coordinators, you can flash through. There's a couple of things I want to sort of point out is just these a couple of these underlinings. I mean, this is Open Street, for example, talking about suspension of reality and transforming streets permanently. You want to move on? Um, playing, this is uh, Festival's Edinburgh, so the, the director of the really interesting groundbreaking um, tailor made organization that brought together all the 12 festivals in Edinburgh. It's not one festival, it's 12 yeah. autonomous festivals. And the way they do what they do is mind blowing. It's so fascinating, I get goosebumps. And if you want to go back, sort of just uh, this idea of down here, this, this bottom line, and this speaks to this is that's it really. But, the experimentation is in the genesis uh, DNA of the performers, the artists, who play a whole in feedback of audience. And according to that, the sway the director is swayed, and that enters the governance, and the voice is heard amongst the collective. And so festivals are by nature experimental, intense, and high risk. And she, yeah, she, she just had this wonderful way of understanding the system and the, the entrepreneurship of the whole system. Um, uh, just a couple of other things that came up in all sorts of interviews were this idea of the collective will. Have you listened to the collective will um, and helped to usher it in um, without kind of, uh, sort of grabbing or controlling it or constricting it? And this idea of pathfinding. So that, that especially came from a lot of the directors at the Edinburgh Festivals. Um, thank you. Uh, okay, so another phase in the research was I went along through the auspices of Cape Town Partnership and their program created Cape Town, I went with a small delegation um, to Edinburgh um, for a research trip to exchange with, uh, there were delegates from all over the world, uh, festival organizers, artists, producers, um, and we learned one hell of a lot, and it was mind blowing. And it was a fantastic opportunity to test all of these things that I've been thinking about in this massive petri dish that is the Edinburgh Festivals. Um, and these are just a couple of things out of the, these are insights out of the Edinburgh space. So these are just, I mean, a whole bunch of numbers on, on, on how they fit the bowl in terms of um, national identity, civic pride, um, ecological impact, bringing awareness to particular issues, topical issues. And think about it, there's four million people that come into that city within a month from all over the world. And the amount of institutional work, if you want to talk about shifting patterns and habits and rituals, it's, it's really amazing. And then in terms of the positioning, so great research, so they had the, the, the real crux of how they were able to pivot from the 2008 crisis and various disinvestment in the creative space, creative industries, was to do with great research, um, bringing up the reality of what was on the ground, and then positioning themselves, positioning their value proposition with each stakeholder. So each stakeholder has got a differing agenda in the British Council's IR, it's, inter it's international relations. So how do you communicate your value to uh, international relations, to the foreign office, mm -hmm. and your festival? It's really interesting to see that. Um, you, could, you could speak a whole week about collaboration and how festivals show uh, really interesting ways of moving forward with that. And then, Importantly, is that all 12 of these festivals had different business models. They had different ways of, of letting their value translate into revenue stream, translate into sustainability. And they had, very, they had a very diverse portfolio in terms of what was coming in and how they were generating returns. Um, so the, the big takeaway here was no one size fits all. I mean, the difference, for example, between the international festival and the fringe and the science festival and the storytelling festival are like worlds apart, but they come together and they organize themselves together around a single uh, common purpose. Um, and then just to finish off, uh, this is a couple of numbers then of the 2015 festival, which we went down from, what was it, what was our team in 2014? Nine people? So we went down from a core team of about um, seven or eight to two, but with, but, but, but with trusting in these principles of self-organization and uh, curating conditions, not the, the rules, not the management style, um, we managed to pull off another festival, um, and someone said it so wonderfully, they said, the festival 2015 both contracted and expanded, expanded in its, into itself. Uh, you can skip a 
couple of happy photos, and then go back. Sorry. Next second, I'm happy photos. That's our that's our Snoop Dragon. That's our sort of uh, mascot. Concert um, in the park, really sort of occupying public spaces, and um, yeah, bringing people together. As you can see, we've got the colourfulness right. There's lots of green and sparkles and stuff. Um, carry on. Uh, yeah, I'm, we, we can just skip through this, but the, this is feedback from festival participants and projects. Um, maybe a couple of these, they're, they're interesting in, in the sense of what kind of value is shown through, um, how did the festival affect the perception of space, we can carry on. Um, and then finally, yeah? Uh, thanks. Uh, finally, the, the, the preliminary findings are uh, festival as organizing, so uh, the idea of a festival is an organizing principle and, and how that might carry on. As I said, it's preliminary, I still haven't written up the findings or concluded all the, the, the data analysis. Festivals organizations, so going on from the best practices, um, what kind of organizational possibilities might emerge. And finally, from shock to awe. So if there was a theory of change for festivals, what is it? And it's that Mostly, we rely on shock, a great crisis, to facilitate change in our institutions and the way we do things. And so the experience of shock is a kind of opening because of fear, because the old way is not going to work and I need to survive. But awe has a similar effect, experiential effect. Awe also opens us to other people, to this idea of communitas. Awe is existing in the space of liminality. Um, so I want, to, I want to explore that further. And I want to know how that's the golden thread to the organizing principle, and that's the golden thread for the, the business model. That if the business model can't allow this to happen inside and outside, um, then, then, then I'm not there yet. And finally, these are, this is just a summary of the key themes that have arisen of, at each of my hypotheses or findings. They relate to the data, and that was just a snippet. And we we'll go through this. And then, some more time. Uh, with soundboard, um, without the soundboard, there is no sound. Um, and the four things that I'd like to sort of play off you um, and sort of understand through um, different voices and different perspectives are strategic non-partners. Who are we not partnering with and why is that strategic and, and when? The timing of, of partnerships in, in terms of capacity as well. Capacity is a real constraint for us. Um, our revenue model, we're shifting. Can I just quickly go through this? Can I? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, so we, 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 we recognize that we really want to continue with this principle of community ownership. And one of the best ways to do that was membership. And so we decided, well, let's, let's, let's test this with our, with our users, with our participants first. And we got some really good responses in at two of our meetings in February, like great responses where people were like, yeah, that'll work, that'll be good. Um, and we decided, well, we still don't want to have a um, festival organization, um, but, but perhaps we now need to scale up the work of Project Zero um, to the greater Musenberg area more generally. Perhaps the ideas and organizing practices from the festival can help us to organize better as a broader community more generally, outside the festival space. Um, so we've recently established a partnership, Partnership Newfoundland, which is currently a VA voluntary association, but we're looking at membership, uh, a, a membership non-profit company. And the idea is to build uh, a monthly revenue from members um, who then uh, differ from organization, business, individual. And through that, have, uh, we're working on ways of translating that into really great governance sort of schemes and, and a way of where, where there will be funds from people for pitches and proposals from the projects that have arisen through the, the, the couple of years so far. And lastly, uh, well that's the revenue dilemma and that's got to do with how far we fell last year in terms of different things and agreements that fell through the, the paperwork. Um, one of them being with the city of Cape Town. Um, misunderstanding between right and aid, event funding and um, services funding. But that's another thing. But, some time. Thank you so much. Um, sorry we went over time.
terms of what I was supposed to complete. It's a little game 